Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the SALT stage here at Boat Life. Um, you've, you've already uh, given me something to trip up on. Uh, <laughs> Ship Happens uh, with Simon and Gemma. I love the title uh, because I now am going to tell you that uh, I am originally a wooden boat builder, so I know a little bit about this subject. Uh, and I know that uh, ship happens. Uh, so welcome to Simon and Gemma here to the stage um, to tell us about this incredible project. And basically, you've taken a World War II warship from its dying days on a mudflat and you're breathing new life into her. Yeah, tell, us, yeah. tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so as you can see the boat there, that was taken quite a few years ago, so she's actually deteriorated quite a bit since then, haven't you, Jim? So let's, let's, let's get some geography. Whereabouts in the world are we? So we're on Heswell, on the Wirral. Um, we never planned on buying a big boat. <laughs> um, we actually bought it off eBay, <laughs> which was very, very unplanned. So the, the story of it, Simon is always sort of we sold little boats, you okay. know, as a hobby and tinkered and then he Sarinda came up on eBay and he's like, Oh Gem, Gem, look at this and I sort of went, Oh, don't be stupid, why does anyone need a big seventy two feet boat? But I read more about the history of her and sort of fell in love with that side of it. Tell us a little bit more about the history. So this is a this is a shot taken in uh, July nineteen forty five, says. Uh, and there is Sarinda there. So this is what she looked like originally, so she doesn't look like that anymore. Um, she was converted in the 80s sort of to a luxury yacht, but she was built in 1943 by Bath and Boats, and she was a navigational leader at Gold Beach on D-Day. Wow, so she's a D-Day boat. Right? So she's a very historic boat. Wow. And um, where did you get this photograph? So is there a, a, a sort of a... a, a a sort of bit of history that comes with the boat. So, we was doing the YouTube, we obviously get a lot of people going, oh, I've seen that boat, oh, I've got a photo of that boat. My, right. my, my grandfather was served on that boat. So the amount of people we've actually contacted, and I think this one came from, from somebody who was our gem? Off. Uh, yes, so this one came from Shan Merritt, whose um, father is actually the lieutenant on board the boat. Oh, fantastic. So we're in contact with her, so she supplies us with loads of photographs and of her dad on the boat and stuff like that. So we've got a lovely sort of family connection to someone who, who was on her during the war. And uh, we had a, a lovely visit on the boat. Uh, we were working away on Friday, the th first Wednesday, one day this week anyway. And there was a, a lovely guy who came up to the boat who said, I've got some photos. Um, so we jumped off, we got our wellies on because we're in the mud and uh, we jumped off the boat and he didn't just have photos, he had video from a cine camp of when she looked like this, wow. actually going through the water. Wow. So 1960, was 1960 it. it was and he was four at the time. So that was after the war, she became um, a customs and excise boat. So that was when she was a customs and excise boat. So he's going to send us over the footage of that. So we've collected loads and loads of history from all different people, even down to we had photos sent from, uh, it's not on the slide, but from like VJ Day Plus One. And it was the uncle of someone who watches who was the cook on board. So it's as well as like restoring a boat and doing all the woodwork, we're learning loads about her all the time, aren't we? Which is absolutely fascinating. Well, that's fantastic. We'll touch on your channel in a minute, but but to be able to broadcast that out and, and get the word out for people to turn up uh, with a bag of you know with a bag of footage from from back in the day. So uh, so there we go. So there she is uh, in her heyday, so to speak. Um, and here we go. Gosh. So I think these photos were actually taken online the first day we actually we actually is we that a for sale see. sign at the back yeah. there? <laughs> yeah. So if you're actually interested, I probably wouldn't ring that number. Anyway. <laughs> um, can I ask? I mean, feel free to say no. Can I ask how much you bought her for? Um, uh, how much do you think? What, what what would you spend on a boat like that? Oh, I mean, obviously it's subject to survey, but uh, um, does the engine work on her? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Mm. Oh my God. 
Does anyone else want to give us a ballpark of what you think she's worth? Not you, you know. <laughs> I, I would say a couple How much? of... 12,000. 12? Ooh, I think we might have got a deal. <laughs> it was a four-figure sum. <laughs> Uh, we paid six thousand and three hundred pound for her, which it, to us it was quite a lot of money at the time. Yeah. Because we never, yeah. yeah, we never planned on buying a boat, and it was January when we bought her, when we had tax bills and stuff like that. You're basically buying a liability, aren't you? Something like that. That's in the mud. So that yeah. was, was a cheap boat. Really. But she'd been passed. Um, we bought it from the guy who had the boat yard, and basically he bought her not because he wanted the boat. He bought her because he knew she would have gone for scrap, um, and okay. people would have bought her because her engines to are save the legacy. Yeah, yeah, so someone could have easily made more money by getting it, ripping the engines out, and selling the engines. But you know, thank God the guy at the boatyard realised the historic importance of her and was like, no. So that was that was really good. So yeah, in grand scheme of things, was it a lot of money? to pay for a broken rotten wooden boat but well let's let's move away from the money because the money is only only to anyone who, who wants to yeah you know, it's what you want to yeah. pay for uh, and we know we know everyone uh, any boat owners in the audience yes we all know it's like standing in the shower ripping up 10 pound notes <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's quite a nice shower I guess yeah, um, so there she is originally you can see a lot of things have changed uh, in, in the top sides of the cabin, um, are you looking to revert back to this or are you going to carry on with this look? So, with us owning one of these boats, we actually know somebody who actually owns an original version. So as, as you've seen the photos from, from um, the, the wartime, yeah. Um, so we've actually been on board, and it just doesn't work as a as a comfortable boat, if that makes sense. Because there's not a lot of cabin here. You've got a lot of deck space, probably for for mines and yeah, and, 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 and depth charges and depth charges and, and stuff. Like X, y, Z, yeah, and that's much more of a so yeah, liverboard boat. Yeah, yeah, it is a really whoever actually designed the layout of the boat. I, I love it. I wouldn't change a thing about the layout. So. Yeah. No, the boat will be put back to the 80s spec. She's actually been in the 80s spec longer than she was in military spec, if that okay, makes sense. Yeah. So, but as you can tell there, she's very, very poorly. Um, what is the... This is going to get my, my, my boat building bit out now. Um, so I can see that she's like a double, du double diagonal cold moulded hull. Correct. So um, on frames, strings and web frames. What is the timber? She's made out of. Um, originally, all, all of the frames was um, a Canadian rock elm. Ah, yeah. Um, and then on I think it's pitch pine and keel. Um, but we're um, replacing them with oak, which we've been recommended to. And the planks, the actual hull? Um, it's large. Large, beautiful. There's a, there's a funny thing about the planking because there was 464 of them built originally for the war, and they all seem to be made out of different hull materials. They started off um, building them with, out of mahogany, and then as that got more sort of scarce during the war, so we haven't got a definitive of what she's made of, yes. and we're not clever enough to actually just identify the species of woods from looking at it, <laughs> so someone else might be able to tell us. But, um, the, the we've had it could be cedar, it could be large, it could be pitch pine, it could be it, it's no, quite nobody seems to know, but apparently all of the large ones didn't last. Well, it so. gives you, I guess, the opportunity to build back using whatever wood you, you uh, from cedar to larch to. But we're uh, quite lucky because the the wood on the hull is the best part about the boat. There you go. There's there's about yeah. two little tiny sections of plank that we've got to replace, and that's it. So just to explain the the construction of this boat, it would be it would have been made um, probably the hull would have been made the other way up, upside down, uh, on a frame that was made uh, individual cut frames that that created a former like a like a skeleton which created a former for the first lay of planks and they'd be tacked onto the former, onto the mould and then they would have been laid fore and aft and then the next section would be laid diagonally and we're talking about very thin planks that you can actually bend uh, and tacked on and glue in between each, each element there was a layer of calico in, between, calico, in right. between each sort of as a waterproof membrane and then 20,000 million copper nails. And, so, and the <laughs> copper nails hold it all together. And then there's another one, the other, sometimes called double diagonal, 
diagonal the other way, and then there's another one fore and aft, and then you can see the last uh, top plank is this diagonal thing to cope with the, the shape of this hull form. Um, and then the whole thing held together by frame, and then broken off the mould after they turned it back up, and then they put the deck on, and then all the, the top sides and stuff. Um, so what's the worst uh, bit of the... So you can see, look, it looks like you've got some help there, some yes, volunteers. Yes, we've had... That's been the best part of the project since we started YouTube, is the amount of amazing people there are in the world. So let's talk about that volunteer. now. So you, you've done this as the two of you, and then you realised that you needed a bit of help, and uh, big up the social community out there. Um, <laughs> that's the best way these day and age to actually get people on your side and, and come to help. Yeah. We, how, how did you do it? How did you start? We were quite naive when we started YouTube, and because we're, like, we're quite independent people, and whatever we do, we always do by you ourselves. You don't like asking for help. Yeah, and then we we had you know the amount of messages that we had. Can we come and help? Can we come and help? So we thought the you know to make the boat look better, sort of for where she is, let's, and protect the, the wood a bit more, because all the, all the paint was all flaky, wasn't it? So we said, right, let's, let's make it a bit prettier and sort it out on the outside. So we held, um, last year and the year before, we had two, two sort of volunteer days. So this, these are photos on the first one where we concentrated on the starboard side and we got it all scraped back and got a good coat of primer on. So. People come from all over the place. I think the furthest people come from was like Kent. So this was a day? Yes. Oh my God. Just goes to show how much you can do in a day with a whole bunch of eager volunteers. So all of that was scraped off. And I'm assuming you don't have like hot guns and stuff because you're out in the... All scraped, um, all scraped off. You had a nice day to it. Got a bit of, and then and then then you got the a nice uh, primer on there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So it was it was we, we have got a bit of wow. power. We are off grid, but we have um, put a lot of time into sort of power out onto the boat because we need it. Is this lot available to come and help me get the wallpaper off my front room? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll do it in half an hour. <laughs> so that's been that's been a, a really amazing part for us is the amount of support that we get and it's it's absolutely fabulous and you know there's people who come to the first painting party you know just to help out who are now sat in the audience and they're like our best friends so you know the the, the amazing people that we've met through this and the support we've had and the lifelong friends that we've now made is just it's been incredible hasn't it that is great and uh, as far as managing the whole project, have you got a plan? Have you got a budget? Have you got a time scale? <laughs> these, are, these are like bank manager questions. <laughs> um, we were quite realistic, I think, at the beginning, where we said it's a long-term project and it's something that we're not going to do in a year or two years because no. it's that big. So we sort of set the goal that we'd love to go and do the D-Day crossing and go back to the original coordinates that we were on on D-Day. And is that an annual thing or it, is that a, a, a tenure thing? It's what, an the... annual thing but we sort of said we'd like to be ready for the 85th anniversary which is in 2029. Okay. So, so I think we're on target aren't we? Yeah, that's our plan to get to seaworthy for that basically. And um, so that gives you an idea of the what it looks like inside. Um, I can imagine you probably need to replace some of the some of the main fixings. Um, iron and steel are not so great in a in a sea environment, yeah. <laughs> even though oak and, and things normally are. So what 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 are what have um, so so two questions? What have been the pleasant surprises? You obviously said the hull, and what have been the oh my god, didn't realise that was rotten through. So the, probably the oh my god, on, on this picture here, we've actually changed every single frame, every single stringer and every yeah. single web frame. So that was like, I didn't actually realise we'd have to change it all. But when so these are frames and these are stringers that hold it all together? Yes, basically, yeah. So you're familiar with the copper rove now? Yeah. Now your yeah. friends? Yeah, it's really, really nice to actually do the traditional techniques and... So copper roving is a chance to shout at your wife? or your husband. <laughs> so basically one person's on one inside and the other person puts the nail through, drives the nail through, then you go, put it on now! And you've got to put the, <laughs> the copper rave on. Then they hold a great big sort of weight, a dolly, and then they start smashing the hammer, which, you know, we're basically doing all of this. And you have to shout at each board. other through the hull, or, or through a... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, through an open window 
normally, but then... So you spent the, you spent the day shouting at each other? Basically, Put yeah. it on now, yeah. drive it home. Oh, we're, not, we're not very polite sometimes, are we? <laughs> you still want anyone, anyone listening that be misconstrued what you're up to? But when I'm, I'm sort of on the inside, the sounds of the outside, and I'm, I'm peeing in it, and then the nails pop back out because he's on the wrong one. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but what did you say? So we have to start like numbering them now, don't yeah. we? To go right, I'm on number two and number three. But we wanted to keep, we wanted to, you know, a lot of people at the beginning going, oh, it'd be a lot quicker if you don't use copper nails and robes and things like that. But because the hull is the only original part left yeah. on it, we wanted to use well, the can original I say you're doing the right materials. Thing. You're but doing the right thing. we've cheated a little bit. Go on. Um, this, you know, a lot of um, proper, a bit of epoxy. A lot, no, no, a, pro, a, lo, yeah, yeah. a lot of um, traditional wooden boat builders who do copper nails and robes will sort of go, oh. but each frame has got about 30 copper nails in it, and there's six inches apart, so there's quite a lot. So we have a palm nailer, like an electric palm nailer, that we've adapted our own robe tools to go in. So we've got a machine that does it. I just have to hold it and go. Oh, I wouldn't knock it. I mean, come on. It's it's you're speed. Still, you're still putting copper rows in there. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like the, the yeah. first, like you know, we spent like the first sort of month doing it by hand, and it got to the point where it's like, well, I'm, I'm going to look like Popeye soon. You just justified. <laughs> I, I, I was explaining exactly how hard that whole process yeah, it, is. It's really hard. So I really take my ha hat off to you there. Um, and so where are you up to now? So you're, you're doing the hull, you're strengthening the hull up. Where are you? You got to the deck and the top work at all? So the, the bow is probably ready to accept a deck at the moment. We've, we've actually fin finished all, all of the woodwork here. Um, there's all, the, all, all of the sole beams. I think if you give it a press, there we, there go. we go. So it's quite a weird image. So the image on the, on the right, as you can see, that's looking forward. Yeah, um, so that is in see. such better nick than than this yes mm -hmm. so it's, that's, quite it's really solid and you can see the, the copper nails there yeah obviously there is quite a few copper nails missing at the moment but they're generally missing for a reason if we've got yeah. to do um, just a plank on the outside or something there's no point in putting a nail through yeah um, or on this on the image on the left you can actually see like there's quite a few web frames missing um, but yeah, so so we've got all the all of, all of the, the um, soul is in the is in is in the bow area this now. So yeah, so it's all basically 18 mil marine at the moment. We're not quite sure what the area is going to be, so we haven't quite fully established the soul yet. But um, yeah, but this this was like that to get to the bow to the air the, the way it is now. That was like two years worth of work. Yeah. Which you know is hard slog. So that only got finished sort of the end of January, and after two years, it was sort of nice to stand there and look, wasn't it? And go, wow, we've actually we've done something and we've achieved something. So that's been our biggest achievement to date, hasn't it? Getting that area done. But last summer we had done the scary daunting task of replacing the roof. Okay. Which I think if you go to the next slide, wow. when. We've replaced the, it's, we've got two sort of roofs, well, deck heads, sorry, you know, <laughs> deck heads. Um, so we replaced the forward one because that was where we were getting a lot of fresh water damage and it was like every time you go in when it was raining you'd have to put an umbrella up. <laughs> so it was like that and everyone's going, you can't replace a roof in the middle of a muddy estuary that's tidal and we like their challenges so we sort of went, watch us. <laughs> so how are you getting the materials to the job itself? You, so you, you can get a van to a dock? No. You can get a van to a dock, you've you got a trolley. We've uh, got, we made How our, do you get that plywood onto board? We made, we took an old sailing dinghy and cut it off oh, and, that. no, not that one, not it was one. a different one. And we actually adapted it to take eight by four sheets. So all the materials that we move over to the boat have to come over by a little boat. And the same with everything that we remove off has all got to come off by boat. So we've got to wait for like high water to be right. And so yeah, that it's hard, isn't it? But so everything basically moves over by a little boat by hand. And you know, obviously when you're doing a, a roof that size, there's a lot of of weight just in ply. <laughs> but it took us a, about eight days to replace the roof. 
And it, it, obviously we couldn't leave the boat while we were doing it because we took the whole roof off. <laughs> and we had to wait for a weather window, which yeah. you don't usually get in the UK. But we were quite lucky, weren't we? It didn't rain once, did it? Didn't rain. Well done. Um, materials and costings and stuff, have you got a budget or are you just uh, putting one foot in front of the other? <laughs> I remember at the very, very beginning we had a, we were in a few local papers and I sort of give a journalist a figure of 50,000. The whole project will, will, will about 50,000. Um, we went over that the first year. <laughs> so. Well, each sheet, each marine ply sheet there is... 100 quid. Is 100 quid, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's... it's it's crazy when you yeah. when you because I keep a log of everything yeah. that, that we buy and yeah we're over the fifty grand mark and we're two years in actually that was last April I'd done the the account so yeah God knows more than what we've got. <laughs> Is there any, any any help from from any? Yeah, uh, we like we skinted ourselves to buy the boat so we didn't have a pot of money for a restoration and. We're quite lucky that we've got quite a good bit of support, obviously, from, from YouTube and we've got awesome Patreons from all around the world who, you know, without them, it, it wouldn't be possible. Brilliant, brilliant. And so then it is when it was done. That's a beautiful new roof, look yeah. at that. That's, that's quite a good shot, if I don't say so myself. It it talk, <laughs> and it gives you an idea of the environment you're working in, this mud yeah. flat environment. Yeah. Um, we, do, we do find it quite beautiful sometimes, the mud. You know, everyone thinks, oh, mud, yeah. Yeah, it's disgusting, but actually, when you look at that, you could be anywhere, couldn't you? You could be. And have you um, got friendly herons that come and say hello? And there's all sorts of very interesting bit of wildlife. birds, which we don't really know much about birds, do we? But, but we're definitely not twitchers. Um, <laughs> Gemma um, um, sort of, I started to name some of the birds. We've got one which, which sort of comes and goes, called, we call it wonky because it had a wonky wing. <laughs> and then it, it, it ended up with like a, um, a, a quaver addiction, didn't it? Because you kept feeding it quavers. So one of our patrons actually sent us a big box of quavers. Oh, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. yeah. But, then, but then one day we gave it um, what's it, which it wasn't impressed with. What's it? What's it? So you're telling this story obviously online using social media. Tell us a little bit about um, what, how that works. You know, the. The, the chat you have, the, the love you get. Do you have any trolls? Do you? I mean, what's your what's your online world? Because we're going to be talking about this tomorrow when we talk to all our wonderful online social ambassadors. We were very naive at the beginning, and we've never been people that like to be in front of a camera. And we filmed it because it was during COVID. Well, you're very natural. You're doing oh. great. <laughs> no, no, I'm like that. But, many cameras here. Yeah, but if you go if you go onto our YouTube channel and you watch the first couple of episodes, you'll go, these are, you know, the absolute ship. <laughs> um, but we, we took a GoPro with us to film it for the family, basically to show them what we were doing because no one could travel. And yeah, YouTube just sort of blew up more than what we expected. We, we thought we'll get like five views and it'll be me mum and me, you know, me, me dad and, and your mum and dad and grandparents and that was it. So I think within the first three weeks, the channel just boomed like far more than we ever expected, didn't it? Well, you're very genuine people in doing a very genuine project. And you know, it's got lots of co emotive connections with the World War and the boat. And, yeah, and, uh, it, it was very, very hard at the beginning on YouTube because we we just we're just two normal people, and we don't know well, we didn't know all the correct boat terminology and stuff like that. So people, there's some there's some really nasty people online, and it got to the point after a couple of weeks where we sort of went, should we stop? And because it, it 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 really affected your mental health, didn't it? And it it was. The amount of disgusting messages I was getting, like personally, you know, people sort of sit on every platform possible. But Gemma, haters was, are going to hate. Yeah, it yeah. was awful, and but we this sort is, of this is bigger and better yeah, than any, any, any. We sort troll. of we had to grow a really thick skin. Yeah. And you like, know, like I, like your boat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you actually realise there's so many more nice people in the world Absolutely. than there is nasty people, so you can't let the couple of bad. One spoil the bunch because well, just the, they're just look awesome. Look at this audience, everyone is smiling. Everyone's got a <laughs> smile on their face, you see? Including me. So talk us through here. This is, this is a bit of uh, boat building 101. So 
how can I describe this? So, so we always have crazy ideas, don't we? We always, long story short, we own the world record for the world's fastest motorhome. We, 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 we've done all sorts. We've done soapbox racing. We've done, so we obviously, we're quite into boats and we, we do the YouTube on the boat. So we thought we need to build a little, a little boat and we wanted to try some electric outboards. Yeah. So we needed to build a boat to suit these particular outboards almost. Um, so yeah, we basically built this and then we decided to make it radio controlled. So we can now send this boat off on its own to basically take rubbish off our, off Sarinda, off the big boats, um, unmanned. Fantastic. So, so it's all, it's all, it's all sort of radio control. You can't send it up the chippy. You can send it anywhere you want, basically. Um, yeah, so, so, so on board it's got a small camera which then transmits back to my transmitter. So I can actually see where, where it is, and yeah, it's really, really good fun. So we're actually doing like a, a demonstration with this tomorrow in the in the, in the pool over, over the way. Yeah, if you do want to see this boat, it is down in the Anglin village by opposite the smart fishing boat, which is a, it, it was actually quite bizarre when we got asked to bring a boat to the boat show because <laughs> it's something we just made in our shed, wasn't it? So yeah, it got a good one, so we've got a good clean this week, ready, ready for it. I love it. You two are such dark horse. I tell you, I, I, I came here to talk about the old wooden boat, and we talk about remote control. But and the way the way we are, we, we we like to make things and not buy things. So you'll see on this boat, um, we actually cast our own cleats out of copper, and Brilliant. it was copper that we took off Sarinda. So everything on the boat, even like the flagpole, everything, it's all handmade, and it's all quite unique, isn't it? Wow, wow, that really is inspirational. So is this a fairly up-to-date shot? Uh, yes, it is. I think that was taken January when we had a tiny bit of sun. <laughs> so you, you've got a pretty uh, solid hull. Um, you've got uh, a nice new roof to stop the water getting in. How's the second upper deck? Awful. 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 You can't stand on there. So that's the next straight issue, straight. is it? That's yeah. the next, um... uh, well, the next issue is the decks, the front, the, decks the front itself. deck. So we're working really hard at the moment to try and get as much of the woodwork done inside we've got to do all the way to the back of the engine room which is let me just point to about here because the deck then raises up there yeah so this year we want to get the front deck done but to be able to do the front deck we need to get all of the woodwork done inside because the frames with the way the boat's constructed you need to put the frames in from the top so okay. we're quite lucky that the deck's full of holes, <laughs> so, so we can, can actually can get the wood working. Yeah. So all of that needs to do before we can do the decks, but we're hoping this summer. This summer, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> We've got like, all the wood work to do, the deck beams, the beam shelf, and stuff like that. But yeah, fingers crossed that'll be a big job this summer. So I want to keep it positive, but I'm going to ask you the obvious question. Have you had any of those moments where you finish the day and you just go, I'm not sure? I'm just not sure about this. No. What's been your lowest moment? Um, do you know, the boat work is the hardest work that we've probably ever done in our yeah. lives, isn't it? And you can work all day and literally kill yourself and you can't even stand up. And you get over and you go, but look what we achieved today. You know, look what we've done. And I think no matter how hard it gets, it, it's not like a, why are we doing this? We shouldn't have done it. I think it's, no matter how hard it is, it's always positive, isn't it? I think we are basically fully committed. We cannot. We I think cannot, so. We I think not. So. Yeah, we can't. We can't turn around. We can't walk away. I think if you, you want to make some money, you want to bottle that positivity and flog that. I think. I think you would get good money for that. But seriously, I mean, I take my hat off. Um, you know, having, you know, had a my, my first career was a boat builder, um, and I understand it's a slow, slow project. Project. You know, these wooden boats don't get built overnight. It's a long project. It's a lot of love, a lot of money, a lot of hours, a lot of toil and trouble. Uh, but the end result is, is absolutely wonderful. Do we have any questions from the audience at all? Uh, how mad do you have to be? Good gone. No questions. And so yeah, what are you planning for when it's uh, finished? So our, our main plan is, as we said earlier, to um, do the, do is, the to do, yeah, is to do the D-Day crossings. Um, ideally, as much historic stuff as we uh, as we can. Maybe, maybe take, or I'd say, veterans out on the boat, or veterans' families anyway on the boat. Because nice. there is a big, huge fraternity of D-Day little ships. 
Uh, you've yes. seen the, the, the film yeah. Dunkirk, you, you've read the history yeah. books. Um, there's a lot of boats that still are, uh, still, uh, you know, used and serviceable and, and up and running on those boats. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 to do like, um, just, just as, as much historical stuff as we can really, and then go and live our lives basically, hopefully go and, go and sail, sail the Mediterranean, that's my dream anyway, to go, to take that boat in some blue water somewhere. If we can afford the fuel, the fuel bills there, I think we can hold about 4,000 litres, so I'm not looking forward to the day when we have to fill the tanks. <laughs> I did look on a map, but it's downhill from there, so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, I cannot wait now that I know about you guys. Um, ship happens, and I'm going to follow you. Uh, I'm going to catch up on the backstory. Um, I wish you absolutely every luck. Uh, if I can help at all, if, if um, connect with all these wonderful people out here, I can see volunteers looking to sign up, come and do a little bit of woodwork. Um, <laughs> Um, it really is wonderful volunteering and helping out and, and, and helping create these things. Um, you're absolutely perfectly fitted to, to boat life here because that's what it's all about, mucking about in boats and enjoying enjoying the waterways. It's, it's nice to show people as well that you don't, need, you don't need to be an expert to be able to do something. You know, anyone can actually do something if you put the mind to it. Yeah, you can all learn it, can't you? you, know, you we basically learn by error. So we've made loads of errors, but, we but we've learned by it. So we can... Well, on that note, I just want to say a huge thank you uh, to Simon and Gemma. And uh, I can't wait to see the finished thing. And, and I look forward to coming out, have a good cup of tea, yeah. and uh, heading, heading down to the channel. So, brilliant. Uh, thank you very much. Brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs>